Greetings from St. Paul Lutheran Church in Huntington, West Virginia. My name is Kevin Mackey, and I'm the pastor here at St. Paul. And uh, we'll be looking at um, one of the four texts for uh, the Sunday of the Transfiguration. Transfiguration Sunday is actually the last Sunday in Epiphany. Um, next Wednesday, actually, we a week from today, we will be celebrating the um, the uh, Ash Wednesday, and I won't be posting uh, a Bible study online next week um, just because of worship prep for Ash Wednesday, but I will then um, for uh, the, the midweek services, and it'll again be Sundays that I'll be, I'll be talking about. So Sunday in Lent and then through Easter, uh, I will be posting on our, on our YouTube channel these kind of ponderings, if you will, and uh, appreciate some of you have been emailing me back and um, some comments and questions that you might have uh, about, uh, about the text. So uh, let's pray. God, thank you as you gather us as people of God. You remind us of your glory, your majesty that is brilliant and shown on the mountaintop. Lord, we also know that uh, we come down from the mountain to be your servants. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, to be your servants in the world. Guide our time together. May it be fruitful in your sight. May you guide and direct the words of my mouth that it may be um, uh, ever fruitful in your, your eyes, Lord God. In your name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> so the uh, lesson is from the um, ninth chapter of, of Luke, chapter 9, verses 28 to 43. Now about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up a mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which, was, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it's good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone, and they kept silent in those days and told no one any, no one any of the things they had seen. On the next day, when they had come down from the mountain, a great crowd met him. Just then, a man from the crowd shouted, Teacher, I beg you to look at my son. He is my only child. Suddenly, a spirit seizes him, and all at once he shrieks. It convulses him until he foams at the mouth. It mauls him and will scarcely leave him. I begged your disciples to cast it out, but they could not. Jesus answered, You faithless and perverse generation, how much longer must I be with you to, and bear with you? Bring your son here. While he was coming, the demon dashed him to the ground in convulsions. But Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit, healed the boy, and gave him back to his father. And all were astounded at the greatness of God. It ends our reading. So um, this, this text from Transfiguration is really two parts. One part is up on the mountains, and then the, the other part is coming down from the mountains. And that in itself is really, um, in essence, our lives, if you will. We sleep, we are quiet. If the, you know, I would liken that to a mountaintop. It's, it's, it's peaceful, hopefully most of the time it is. Um, and then we are awake and we are in the midst of the world. 
Um, so a preaching opportunity or a, a thinking time could be about those mountains and, and valleys and how we balance those two things out. Um, how do we, you know, how do we as disciples of Christ balance those two things? It really also, the other thing that, that I've really in, uh, I enjoy about this text, and we read a different story each, um, each year of the Revised Common Lectionary, but it's, it's the, the same basic principle, is, um, it, and in Luke's Gospel in particular, there's this, this sense of, um, of, of the senses, um, hearing and seeing, and, um, and in particular, those are really critical in this, um, in this narrative. Um, to, to see Jesus, to hear him, to hear the others and see the others that are with him. And then, uh, and then when he comes down from the mountain, same kind of thing, these, um, these emotions or these, excuse me, these senses, not emotions, but these senses that, um, and, and another opportunity to just think on uh, how we, how we experience God in our lives. Uh, is it through touch? Is it through hearing, seeing? You know, what kind of learner are we? What kind of receiver are we of God's grace? And I think there are different ways that people receive, uh, receive God's grace. Really invites the readers to enjoy the excitement, to look and see what's happening. In particular, that, well, for, for both stories of this whole text, the story is for readers um, and Peter and James and John. Uh, the prayer is the context again. Lots of things happen, in particular Luke and in Acts, his second volume, um, when prayer is brought on and prayer is initiated. So you can talk about prayer and think about prayer in your prayer life and how to discern God's will um, in your prayer life. Um, too often, I think we we don't we don't take the time to to try to discern what God is is calling us to be about. Luke frequently couches the epiphanies, these kind of manifestations, these revealings of God in prayer. Um, again, the terms have to do with looking and seeing. Sight is important, and hearing. Uh, all of the all of the senses, you know, sleeping, they were on the ground sleeping. Um, lots of connections also with the Exodus story, God's appearance to Moses, uh, the whole of the story. There are companions um, in both stories. They're on a mountain. Um, Jesus' uh, change of countenance, his his change of who who he is, what he looks like. In reference to the tents, the cloud, the fear, uh, all of that really is. So this, you know, many of scholars have suggested that this is another exodus. Um, and that this exodus, of course, is Jesus going to the cross. Um, and to be in the midst of the people, this perverse generation, as he, as he calls the... Uh, I think that's done out of frustration that people aren't hearing the word, aren't aren't receiving maybe as as he's presenting that. Um, Luke's point is not um, experienced an internal adjustment of some sort, but it's led to a transformed appearance. Um, that inner was made transparent to those who were with him. So it, it's not a an internal adjustment of some sort, where Jesus somehow, but uh, according to this commentator, and I think I, I, I agree with this, led to transformed appearance, but that the inner was made transparent to those who were with him. That, you know, insistence again on the spirit and the spirit's moving and directing and guiding. Um, again, they are silence. You know, there's there's silence after um, after the they kept silent and in those days told no one any of the things that they had seen. Uh, they don't even have to have to say Jesus doesn't even have to say shh. 
be quiet, um, don't tell anybody. Uh, they're probably so enamored, so frightened, so don't, you know, still coming to terms with, with stuff in their lives, with their, with this experience that they, they, they are silent. Um, but it's only after the resurrection that disciples are able to grasp the significance of that event and, and the whole story of Jesus. Um, you know, in the second story then of the healing, faith is the full behavior is necessary if one is to engage effectively in divine mission. It's this, you know, it's this faith that this man has. We know that it's his only son that probably makes Jesus much more, um, you know, he's compassionate. But that particular uh, fact in the text um, I can see Jesus, wow, that's, that's their only boy and, and how important that is. Um, it's the same voice. Uh, the other thing, you know, at, on the mountain there's that baptism. Baptism, though, it's addressed to Jesus and in the transfiguration, the, the testimony about Jesus directed to the disciples. Uh, and then again, this kind of mountaintop and, um, in valleys, it's in the valleys where we live. On the mountaintop is where we worship, where we experience the glory of God. But we leave worship. Um, we don't, you know, we're not monks, all of us. Um, we don't just, um, and even the monks have fun and play and are in the valleys of life. Uh, the mountaintops are where we worship and, and the challenges of daily you know, when we come down then are the challenges of the daily service and ministry. Um, there's really, the other thing that I find interesting in Luke's um, two, two, um, two writings from Luke and from Acts, he wrote both of those, um, is this movement. There's, there's movement in the text continuing to, Jesus is moving toward Jerusalem. And, um, and what happens in Jerusalem. And that, um, that's, of course, what, what uh, Lent is all about. It's about those um, coming to terms with what it means to be, um, to, to see Jesus as he goes to the cross. And um, Transfiguration is one of those holidays, uh, church holidays, that are, that are the bridges, I like to call, between Epiphany, the revealing of Jesus, and then, and then the the moving forward um, as we look to Lent, um, and um, and that's kind of, you know, I think I think lots of images to play with in this text, lots of things to think about and to ponder and to pray through, and I hope some of these words have been helpful for you as you as you look at these um, these videos and. Um, and they are helpful in your worshiping and in your daily discipleship as a, as a servant of Christ. Take care, and may God bless you the rest of this week.